Hey, it's Jared with another Elementor tutorial. Today we're going to look at customizing buttons. So buttons are great uh, elements that you can drag onto your page that help people get to other places. It's a more visual way of letting them know what to click on. And so I'm a big fan of them. Uh, you can overuse them, so I recommend using them only when necessary but you can customize them to make them look and feel the way that you want them to to fit your page and we're going to look at how to do that. So I'm just going to create a new section that can house our button. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, kind of margin here between these two sections so our button isn't right up against our slider that we created in another tutorial video here on this channel. So let's go to element and choose button. So drag button right into place. And you can see we've got a lightly colored button with text. By default, if you adjust your site, your global site settings, you can set the colors that this button is going to be when you drop it into place. I highly recommend doing this because then when you drop in a button, it's gonna have all of the changes automatically made to it and you don't have to customize every single button. And we do want some button consistency throughout our website. So uh, you get to that by going here into the menu and clicking site settings. I have another tutorial that's up on this YouTube channel already that teaches you how to go and customize those site settings. So we have different button types, default, info, success, warning, danger, and uh, really these don't change anything as far as the design goes. Um, they just add uh, in a little bit of, I believe, data behind the button. And there are ways to customize some of the things that work in these different types of buttons. Um, it's also a, uh, like if you're using this button to submit data, there's different ways that you can configure a button. We're just gonna leave it at default. So here's where you would customize the text. We'll type in learn more, just make it a typical learn more button. You can add a link. One of the great things about this box is you can search from other pages that are on your website. So uh, if you have other pages, you can search by name and it will pop up and then you can link to it and it will populate it with that link. There's also dynamic tags that you can select. Uh, for example, if you want to link to any of these things like your site URL, which would take people back to the home page, an internal URL, some sort of a short code, which would then trigger maybe something like a pop-up from another plugin that you're using. So there's different ways that you can configure that but I'm just going to make it link to the, the page that we have just for the purposes of this uh, tutorial. We can then align our button center, might look good if it's gonna be in its own section like this. We could change the button size, so maybe make it a little bit bigger. Adding an icon definitely draws more attention to a button. So if you have an SVG image, which is typically like an icon type uh, design file, you can upload that here or you can choose from the massive library uh, already. And so maybe I would go with something like a, an arrow that's pointing towards the text like that. And then I can choose whether it's positioned before or after. And I can also adjust the spacing if I don't like the amount of spacing that's there, if, it, if it's too close to the text. So I might go with like six, and that's pretty close to what the default was anyways. So under style, here's where we can change the, uh, the colors and the behavior of the button. So we could change the typography. If we want to change the font, we could do that. We could change the font size, make it more bold. We can transform, make it like uppercase to make it stand out a little bit more. We could change things like letter spacing, stuff like that, all right here. And then under text shadow, we can choose whether we want the, uh, the text shadow to uh, appear underneath it, which makes the text kind of pop off a little bit. Um, by default, it has just a little bit of a blur, but if we want to make it stand out a little bit more, we can add a little bit of kind of horizontal and vertical, which is going to shift it over and down a little bit and kind of make some adjustments there. And you can see it kind of moving around in the background as I make drastic changes to, uh, to that drop shadow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave these at default, which is set to nothing, and that's fine. So now uh, normal and hover, this is going to allow us to change text color uh, background type, background color, and uh, add a hover animation as well. 
So if I don't like the color of this button, perhaps it's not sticking out enough to me, I can go ahead and change the color of the button. And then when I go into hover, I could change the color of the button as well to another color. So let's start out with this color and then go into hover, add that color, and then let's make it lighter so that when they mouse over it, it makes the button lighter. Uh, or we can make the button even darker, have it darken up a little bit. Yeah, that stands out a little bit more. Hover animation, we can also make it do something like grow when somebody clicks on it, which is a fun way to also let people know that they have activated that or that their mouse is directly over that button. Um, so grow is kind of nice. Um, we can also set the background type to something like a gradient uh, or just a standard color. So that can allow us to really make for an interesting button. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to leave it as a standard color. So we could also adjust the border radius here. If the border doesn't have enough curved radius around it, you can change that from the default. And then, of course, we can also add overall shadowing to the button to make the button stick out a little bit more and stand off the page a little bit more as you can see it's doing. If we have just the default 10 pixel blur, it's going to put that drop shadow all the way around the button. But of course, we can customize the direction of the shadow and make it a little bit more of a directional light shadow, which I like rather than just having a blur shadow all the way around the outside. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off. I don't want any shadow at all. And that is how we customize a button. So now we have a button that totally is operational. It stands out. We changed the color, we customized it completely, and we're ready to go. If we go ahead and update our page and then go to our actual page here that's in another tab, we see our button and we can see how it reacts and it looks pretty good. One thing you definitely wanna check out with buttons is how they're going to look in responsive mode. So go down to mobile and just make sure that your button isn't doing something weird like coming off the page or whatnot. So if your button on a mobile device or in this mobile preview is looking a little too large, we may want to customize the size or maybe just decide instead of a medium button, we wanna go with a smaller button. Um, and then of course we can come in and make some changes to things like typography that are just gonna be specific to mobile. But as far as the button size goes, we're pretty much locked in. So you wanna choose a button size that's gonna look good across all screen sizes. So after we're done, just make sure always that you hit that update button down there so that you save your changes. You can always go to the history and go back and undo if you uh, decided you didn't like the change that you just made. So that's always possible. But that's gonna do it for this tutorial on how to customize buttons. If you enjoyed it, give the video a thumbs up, please, and click that subscribe button so you can be notified when we put out more videos. We also have that free Elementor course that I talked about at the beginning. You can get free access to it from my website, or you can also go and sign up for a free Skillshare uh, account, getting a trial there and utilizing that to get access to the course as well. But that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much for checking it out, and I hope to see you back here soon in another video. Take care.